In the last video, I verified this thing would make a good spark. So I'm on the way to getting it back together. I got a few more holes to tap here. And then I'm going to start working on this sheet metal. These two pieces aren't too bad. They got a lot of surface rust. And these two pieces are still connected together by that bolt and the busted off piece of backing plate. These mounting bolt holes are torn out and damaged. And the bottom's rusted out. I got the head of the bolt clamped in the vise here and the plan is to cut a slot in this aluminum piece and then break it apart. I got some sparks there so I'm down to the bolt. I'm going to see if that's far enough. Alright, that's what I wanted. No damage to the parts that I needed to save. Well, this is all the bolts that came out of it. 
I usually end up using something different because I want a flat washer on any slotted holes and any holes that are torn out. I think I have enough bolts here to do the sheet metal. That bolt's got a mashed thread on it. Got to get a different one. This piece has a big dent in it, so I got to fix that. This piece has a gap right here. So I'm going to take that back off and bend it strategically. So when you put the bolt in, it'll stay up against there. Oh, there's another slotted hole. Need to get me a flat washer. Well, here's the carburetor that was on this tractor. It's not in very good shape. It's supposed to just have a bolt in the bottom, but this looks like some sort of carburetor fitting. The throttle plate's totally locked up solid. And the choke plate's totally locked up solid. I'm going to put some PB Blaster on here and see if I can work them loose. Well, I couldn't get those shafts to free up on that carburetor, so I'm not going to mess with that one at the moment. I'm going to save all these parts. And I'll let that throttle and choke plate soak for a while. See if I can get them freed up. If the shaft holes are not wore out, I might be able to make a good carburetor out of that. For this tractor, I'm going to use this one I got off my buddy. He bought a new carburetor and gave me this one. It looks like it's in good shape, so I'm just going to take it apart and clean it and try to use it. These carburetors are pretty simple. This bolt on the bottom holds the fuel bowl on. When you pull this pin, you can remove the float. And then the needle valve drops out. And I'm taking off the gasket here, and that's as much as I take off the bottom. And then I take out the two screws that have the larger heads and the spring underneath. This one on top is your high-speed fuel mixture adjustment. It's got a long tube on the bottom of it. The smaller screw with the spring is just your idle speed adjustment. And I usually leave that one in. And after I pick off the gasket here, I'm ready to clean all the parts.
There's a number of parts cleaners out there and carburetor cleaner, kerosene, some people use gasoline. Just need to dispose of it properly. I'm going to leave that soak while I go eat lunch. Well, what I need to do here is clean everything and make sure there's no clogged holes and be totally thorough about it These little springs I'm going to hold with pliers and clean with a hand wire brush because that wire wheel will throw them across the room. Some of these parts I can clean on the wire wheel. No, not that one. You got to be really careful with the tips of these screws. This needle is actually a hollow tube. There's a couple holes near the top you gotta make sure are clear. And there's one down at the tip there you gotta make sure is clear. Well, I just figured out I don't have any carburetor kits at the moment. So I'm just gonna put this back together. I got two bowl gaskets to choose from. I'll pick the best one and clean it up. Hey, if the needle and seat works, the gas don't get that high anyways, right? On these carburetors, I adjust the float so the float's parallel to the flat part of the casting. 
And make sure the gasket's not interfering with anything. For the main needle, the long one that goes on top, you want to turn it in until it bottoms out lightly and then back it out two full turns. On the smaller idle adjustment screw, turn it in until it bottoms out slightly and back it off one and a quarter turns. Don't tighten them in very hard because you can damage these. Well, I need to get this gasket off of here. And it's stuck on there pretty good. So yeah, this is a wood chisel. But I use it for scraping all the time. And I resharpen the edge so it's not as sharp as you'd like your wood chisel to be. But it's good for scraping. I want to check this fuel pump to see if it's good. So I'm going to put this fuel line on the inlet side. This says in over here on this one and that says out over there. And then I'm going to blow through here and I should be able to blow through it. That works okay. So now I'm going to put the hose on the other side and I'm going to try to blow backwards through there. I should not be able to because the one-way valves inside would stop the airflow. Alright, that feels like the valve's okay. These are the carburetor screws that were on this engine. And I don't like them because the slot's not very deep. And this little screwdriver slips out if you get it on a little bit of an angle. I want to use the little screwdriver because you can't get the screwdriver straight onto the screw head. This other style of screw has a deeper slot. So I can put it in here and turn my little screwdriver and get the screw started in the hole. I need to make a gasket for this. Most people have probably seen this trick. You just need to hit it on the edges lightly so that it puts a mark in the gasket material. And then you'll know where to cut it. I got this cheap hole punch set 
and the biggest one is a little bit smaller than the big hole in this gasket. When I use these, I like to do it on the end of a piece of hardwood. I'm going to have to use this one a few more times to enlarge the hole. So I move the punch over a little and cut the edge out of the first hole to make the hole bigger. The bolt fits through this size nicely. That looks pretty good. I put the bolts through the carburetor and gasket here and put all that on there together. This is where I used a small screwdriver to get it started. And this is where I had the camera in the wrong place. This is the fuel line I'm using. And I need to use this fitting out of the old carburetor. This fuel line has brass ferrules on there instead of the rubber washers I see on most tractors. And if you look, these fittings are not in line with each other. The bottom one sticks out a little more. So this fuel line only goes on one way. When I tested the fuel pump, I really only tested the two one-way valves inside, but I thought of a way to test the diaphragm to see if it's good. So I'm going to blow into the inlet and put my finger over the outlet and see if I can hear any air coming out of the crankcase. Well, I didn't hear anything. I'm going to try it again with my ear down next to this crankcase hole. This might only work for large leaks. You might not be able to detect the smaller leaks.
Yeah, I don't hear anything that way either. So I'm just going to try it and see if it works. Well, that's as far as I'm going this time, and here's what it looks like. Alright, that's it.